Yeah, good morning everyone. And uh, today we are going to discuss about financial management and accountability framework. This is chapter 10 of our syllabus. So I am Mr. M. I. M. Riyad. So I can get some things which you have already studied in this course. So this uh, understanding, the remembering of these things, legal frameworks, may be very helpful for the continuation of the financial regulations, the framework. So the legal framework, the constitutions, right? The constitution is the, the base for all the legal arrangement of the country. So the chapter 17 of, the, of our constitution, right? The chapter 17 of the constitution of the domestic socialist republic of sri lanka article number 148 to 154 the numbers contains a broader principle of public finance right? the constitution the chapter 17 explains the financial management uh, framework how the finance the fund of the government public fund should be managed so it can be explained from uh, the constitution from article number 148. So 148 says full control over public finance lies with the parliament. Public finance, public fund, is a, right? Public fund, the full control of that public fund is under the control of the parliament. And the all government revenues follow into the consolidated fund. The government will generate revenues, can get the fund in so many ways say for example in the form of government tax income tax value added tax fines penalties donations everything's come to one account right that account is called consolidated fund consolidated fund for your understanding you can name as your in your mind uh, accumulated fund accumulated fund all the funds will come to the consolidated fund and uh, right, the government will get money from several ways in terms of revenues and other forms. So that funds will uh, keep in concentrated fund. From the fund, uh, government have to spend, right? To spend that money. Right? Article number 150 says warrant, right? So warrant under the hand of the Minister of Finance, right? the fund in the hand of the parliament to spend that money, the Minister of Finance can issue warrant, right? Warrant to spend the money, right? Say for your understanding purpose, we can say as a, what, coupon, right? The Minister of Finance will issue the coupons, right? So you can, if you write a coupon instead of warrant, that's wrong. But technical correct term is warrant. We have to use the term warrant, right? The warrant under the hand of the Minister of Finance is to be issued for any withdrawals from the concentrated fund, right? So all the funds will come into the concentrated fund. To spend that fund, we want warrant. This warrant is issued by the Minister of Finance. So the concentrated fund can be withdrawn from withdrawn using the warrant. The warrant will be issued by the Minister of Finance. And the article article number 151 says the parliament may uh, by law create a contingencies fund for the purpose of providing for urgent and unforeseen expenditure. So it's a so issuing of warrant by the Minister of Finance is a uh, normal function, a routine function, right? Routine activity. But in terms, in case of emergency, like tsunami, flood, earthquake, this time the government need money to spend to face that uh, contingencies. So that time, so Parliament has uh, given an authority by uh, the authority in the parliament, right? And uh, the article number 152 says, no bills or motion affecting the revenue shall be introduced in the parliament except by the minister with the approval of the cabinet. So without the approval of the cabinet, so no bills or no motion will be approved, introduced in the parliament. 
Uh, initially, they have to get the approval from the cabinet. Once they accept by accepted by the cabinet, then they move to the parliament for approval of the parliament. Right. And uh, Article Number One Hundred Fifty Three says appointment of auditor general. Right. Appointment of auditor general uh, by the president, subject to the approval of the Constitutional Council. That's a council called Constitutional Council, with the subject to the approval of the Constitutional Council, the President of Sri Lanka will appoint Auditor General. Auditor General. He is in charge for overall supervision of financial activities. He can, if there are any fraud, some the people may petition to Auditor General. So based on the petitions, Auditor General Department, Auditor General will appoint auditors to investigate that fraud and activities. And normally, the all government organizations should send the annual report and and the financial reports to the auditor general, the general department on a timely basis. And 153 from A to H says the constitution of the audit service commission vested with the powers on the appointment, promotions, transfers, the disciplinary control, and dismissal of the members belong, belonging to the Sri Lanka State Audit Service, right? The Audit Service, no? The audit Service Commission, so the appointment, transfer, disciplinary action, control, dismissal, or whatever, it belongs to the uh, belongs to the Sri Lanka State Audit Service, right? And Article Number 154, it says uh, the duties and functions of Auditor General and report to the Parliament within 10 days. Right, now we come to our framework introduction. It is important for a public sector manager and officers entrusted with the financial and accounting responsibilities to understand the operational framework within which public financial management and accountability are implemented and achieved. So for example, now you assume that you have you have been appointed as an accountant for a government organization right? uh, to effectively manage the public fund. We have to have a very clear understanding about the, about the financial and accounting responsibilities. You have to understand your responsibilities. Right? These understandings and responsibilities will come from the best understanding from the operational framework, right? Operational framework may include the financial regulations. It's a huge document, right? Uh, and uh, time to time, the government will issue circulars. And uh, without understanding these circulars and financial regulations and guideline of the government, as a, as a financial manager in public sector, you are unable to run operate the organization you can manage the public fund right it is important for public sector manager say for example uh, head of the department right or uh, the accountant a chief financial officers chief accounting officer accounting officer so whatsoever uh, officers entrusted with financial and accounting responsibilities right so the government relies on that public sector manages on financial and accounting responsibility. So they have to understand the operational framework within the within which public financial management and accountability are implemented and achieved. It's, it's, it's in simple terms, without understanding the uh, framework. Right? So for example, if you uh, a, a company accountant, you have been appointed as an accountant for a particular company, private company, so we have to have a, a good understanding on Sri Lanka financial reporting framework and uh, Lanka accounting standards, Sri Lanka accounting standard. So without understanding these th these two things, you are unable to uh, you are unable to accountable for the fund management or financial accounting. Likewise, without understanding of the financial regulation framework framework and the circulars, you are unable to manage that duty in the government sector organization. 
this include Intel AR. So various authorities involves right and their powers and responsibilities and how they delegate their responsibilities to. Okay. The government organization structure start from the parliament. Okay. Parliament, cabinet, ministry secretary, ministry level, department level, organization level. So there are many people, right? There are many officers, there are many authorities. So they delegate their power, like uh, public or organ private organizations. The parliament, the, the whole, the sole responsibility, this belongs to the parliament. The parliament is unable to do everything, you no, know, on behalf of the behalf of the public. So they are delegate their power. They have established ministries. They have established a department and organization, right? And they delegate their power. And Sri Lanka Sri Lankan government organization have. A, a concrete organizational structure throughout the organizational structure they are delegating their power and responsibilities financial regulation it's very important right? it's a very important document for the financial management in public sector organizations so financial regulations of government of sri lanka lays regulations and guidance on this aspect like accounting standard and the sri lanka financial reporting standard in government organization, the basic basis financial regulations, right, is the guideline. So legal framework, financial regulations. Financial regulations, financial regulation is issued under the hand of Minister of Finance. So who is issuing the financial regulation? Is Minister of Finance, right? Minister of Finance will issue the financial regulations. And the financial regulations provide a regulatory framework within which the government financial transaction are carried, carried out, right? How financial transaction in government organizations are to be done is based on the financial regulations. The financial regulations give all the guidelines. The financial regulations intends to ensure orderly financial transaction in public sector institution. It's not an advice. Right, financial regulations will not give advice. It or it gives order. Right, everybody in the public sector organization, in terms of public fund, should follow, should implement, should go through the financial regulations. The present financial regulation, it is published in 1992. Right, so earlier financial regulation was uh, 1966. So previous edition was 1966. Now it's updated version is 1992. So time to time, uh, the treasury will issue the circulars amendments on the financial regulations. So financial regulations are the uh, binding on ministers. Financial regulations are binding ministers, departments, statutory bodies, and all state employees. Right. So they are bounded with financial regulations so whatever the decisions made by the minister or department secretary any officers in the government organization they should follow financial regulation they can't violate financial regulations in the case of government corporations these financial regulations will apply unless they have adopted their own comprehensive financial regulations, rules, and procedure. So for example, when we take uh, uh, CEB or Sri Lanka Telecom, so they are government corporations, the government uh, companies, government-owned companies, Sri Lanka Sugar Corporation, Sri Lanka Petroleum Corporation, other corporations. So they can develop their own financial regulations, but these development should be adoption of existing financial regulation existing means uh, the financial regulation issued by the ministry of finance so by violating uh, this financial regulation they can't they can't uh, formulate regulations it's it mean whatever the organizations they have to follow the basic financial regulations and uh, here when we look at uh, the financial regulations, general scope on the legal framework. The financial regulations uh, mainly deals with uh, regulations on the following aspects. 
So estimate of expenditure and revenue. So how do we estimate? And estimate the expenditure and revenue. So it is the, one of the section in the financial regulation. Authorities and expend authorities and expenditures. Refund and write-off. It's one of the chapter section. Financial management and accountability, receipts and payments, custody of public money, imprisonment and bank account, imprisonment and bank account, accounting and book, accounting and books of accounts, advance accounts, cachery accounts, accounts accounts, court accounts, foreign aid, printing and publication, supplies, works and services. There are sections. These are the sections of financial regulations but our scope in our syllabus is lays only on financial management and accountability we don't need to study in our course all the sections so we are limited to this section this chapter is limited to financial management and accountability right now we move directly into the financial regulations on 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 131. So these financial regulation numbers, the sections are deals about financial management and accountability. Financial management and accountability. Right. We start from 124, financial regulation number 124. The Minister of Finance, the Minister of Finance, is to lay down a broad framework within which a department of financial transaction of all kind may be undertaken. And the, it simply says the Minister of Finance may lay down the framework. Right, Minister of Finance is the uh, the key ministry in managing public fund. Minister of Finance. So he is responsible, the Ministry of Finance. Minister of Finance is responsible for all financial transactions held in government organization, even in the school, right? School fees or the salary of the minor staff in a school. For that transaction also, Minister of Finance is responsible, ultimate responsible, according to the Financial Regulation 124, part one and part two of the same regulation says the minister of finance is appoint the secretary to the ministry we know that uh, the minister of finance is the highest position in the uh, organization structure fin financial structure of the organization of government of sri lanka so he can't he can't uh, monitor each and every transaction in each and every organization. It is very difficult. It is uh, impossible. Therefore, he has delegated the power, right? Minister of Finance will delegate the power uh, to the each ministry. Minister of Finance, say for example, uh, the monitoring of the financial transaction in the schools, he can, the Minister of Finance can delegate the power to Ministry of Education. The Minister of Education can delegate the power to the Ministry of um, so Department of Education, Department of Education, and he can delegate the power to uh, the principals, no? Principals, principal can delegate the power to the accountant like that. Uh, the Minister of Finance is to appoint the secretary, right? Secretary to the ministry, right? There are ministries, there are 30, 35 ministries. So each, each ministry is having their own secretary. And the secretary to be the chief accounting officer, right? So for each ministry, they have one chief accounting officer, and that chief accounting officer is secretary to the ministry. Then, who is the uh, secretary to the ministry at present? In education, Ministry of Education, who is the secretary of Ministry of Education? Who is the Minister of Education in Sri Lanka at now? Please respond through chat box. Professor, Professor Kapila Pereira is the uh, secretary to the 
Honorable Secretary to the Ministry of Education. And uh, Professor G. L. Pires is the Minister of Education. In terms of uh, Minister of Education, uh, the Secretary, it's mean uh, Professor Kapila Pereira, Kapila C. K. Pereira is the Chief Accounting Officer of his ministry. And uh, the Minister of Finance is to appoint the Secretary to the Ministry to be the Chief Accounting Officer. You have to remember, right? Chief Accounting Officer all the times the secretary to the ministry right the minister of finance is to appoint the secretary to the ministry to be the chief accounting officer of his ministry and delegates to him as chief accounting officer the responsibility for supervising departmental financial transactions subject to the direction of the treasury right treasury the secretariat of the ministry of finance Treasury is under the control of Ministry of Finance. Ministry of Finance uh, will delegate their power, delegate the authorities to secretary and appoint the secretary as a chief accounting officer. He is responsible for supervising departmental financial transactions. It is subject to the deductions, the circulars, advice, orders of the Treasury. The Treasury belongs to the uh, Ministry of Finance and uh, Financial Regulation 125. Right, it's explained accounting officers and the revenue accounting officer. So, accounting officer is different from chief accounting officer. Chief accounting officer is the uh, secretary to the ministry. So, accounting officer is the head of the department. Head of the department. Okay, accounting officers. So earlier it was chief accounting officer. Now we are going to discuss about accounting officer. The chief accounting officer is explained in FR 124. But the accounting officer explained in FR 125. Accounting officer means except where other where other arrangements are made by the treasury, right? Head of each department. Head of each department, so Department of Education, Department of Education Publication, Department of Examination, right? Department of Railway, right? So there are many departments. For each department, head of each department will be the accounting officer, right? Head of each department will be the accounting officer in respect of all financial transactions of his department, right? The Ministry of the Parliament is uh, handed over the responsibility to the Minister of Finance. Minister of Finance will delegate their power to the Secretary to the Ministry, and Secretary to the Ministry work should work as a Chief Accounting Officer. Again, the Chief Accounting Officer, it means Secretary, is delegate their power to the to the head of the department, head of the department under his ministry, and appoint them as a Accounting Officer accounting officer in respect of all financial transaction of his department as such he is immediately responsible to he is immediately responsible to his accounts his chief accounting officer right the head of the department is responsible to secretary likewise the accounting officer is responsible to chief accounting officer in the manner laid down in the financial regulation it's it is clearly explained in the financial regulation, right? Number 125. Each secretary to the ministry, each secretary to the ministry is mean what? Chief financial officer, chief accounting officer. Each secretary to the ministry shall, in addition to his being the chief accounting officer of his ministry and the department under the ministry, be be the accounting officer for the department of the ministry office. So for the ministry office, the ministry office is a separate one, no? So in the, at the ministry office, there is no head of the department. So the head of the department for that ministry is the secretary. So that time on his office, any financial transaction on his office, uh, secretary should work chief accounting officer as well as accounting officer. Revenue accounting officer, right? Accounting officer is one position. Revenue accounting officer is a, another position. 
and the treasury will ind indicate treasury I mean ministry of finance the treasury will indicate from time to time the officers who will responsible who will be responsible for the preparation of the estimates of revenue the government will get revenue in other some sort of ways in that case and the treasury will appoint a revenue accounting officer revenue accounting officer under the different heads head uh, sub heads items and sub items and who will ultimately accountable for variations between the estimates and actual collection it's uh, in case of uh, revenue they have to prepare a budget this budget is prepared by the revenue accounting officer right so based on their budget so the budget is uh, should be prepared based on the heads head of the department right by department wise sub head item wise right like so as a accounting student you also prepared the budget no likewise in government organization also they have to prepare budget uh, right so there will be a de deviations between actual estimates and uh, actually what we have collected so for that deviation the estimating officer estimate revenue officer will be responsible for that such officers shall for the purpose of these regulations be referred to as revenue accounting officer right the person who is appointed to estimate the revenues he will be referred as a revenue accounting officer right this is uh, uh, this is implemented by a financial regulation 125 part b 125 subsection b b means two right the function of accounting officers and revenue accounting officers are indicated in financial regulation 128. The function of accounting officer and revenue officers is laid in financial regulation 128. Now we'll see financial regulation 126. It says the treasury supervision and control. How the treasury, it's been Ministry of Finance, control and supervise the financial transaction in the government organizations. See, the FR 126 part one says, the chief function of the treasury is to maintain control and supervision over the government finance, right? It is therefore the duty of treasury to set up a system of financial administration that is satisfied in all respect, especially with regard to accounting, security, and responsibility. This it does in two ways, right? In simple terms, the treasury, a chief function of the treasury is what? Maintaining and controlling, maintain control and supervision of all government finance. All the financial transaction should be monitored and controlled by the treasury. Right? Therefore, to achieve the objective, to implement the functions, to execute their functions, uh, they implement a financial, the system of financial administration. That is what financial regulations, right? System of financial administration. It's a secular, right? Directions, advices. Right? Uh, the system of financial administration should satisfy regard to the accounting, security, and responsibility of the officer. So how it achieve this in two ways. The one, by regulations, directives, and instructions that are generally applicable. So time to time, Ministry of Finance, the Treasury will issue circulars. Issue circulars. It is common for all organization, all government organization running in Sri Lanka government of Sri Lanka. That is number one. The second way is by instructing or advising chief accounting officer, an accounting officer of any special measures necessary in particular circumstances. Right? Uh, so so sometimes the regulations, especially to a particular ministry or particular department, that time they are not giving say common circulars. They are assuming instructing issuing 
a letter a circular specifically to the department or ministry or sometimes they can advise them directly to the particular ministry sec ministry secretary that is chief accounting officer chief accounting officer so secretary to the ministry and accounting officer is the head of the department of the ministry right of any special measures necessary in particular circumstances so for example if government wanted to stop salaries or government wanted to stop uh, overtime payment overtime payment for a particular uh, employees in the department so that time it's not common for all organization in the in sri lanka so in that time the treasury will issue circular to that particular ministry or to the particular department right so there are two ways number one by regulating regulations directive and instructions it is common right it's common so it's common and second one uh, is a, it is it is especially for the particular departments or the particular ministry that time the treasury will instruct directly to them the controlling and supervisory function of treasury include the following so how they control and supervise the function of treasury first the number one appointment the appointment of chief accounting officers and accounting officers to determine the duties and responsibilities so the ministry of uh, finance I mean treasury will appoint chief accounting officer and accounting officer right the second communicate and interpret the treasury treasury will communicate and interpret all financial directions of the minister of finance to all chief accounting officers and accounting officers first they are giving appointment and they determine duties duties and responsibilities and the treasury will communicate all their directives the instructions to the uh, chief accounting officers and accounting officers and all the instruction come from the ministry of finance and third to maintain control over the department department card scale salaries rate of wages sir the salary if they if the government employees need salary or if they want to fill a card or if they want to increase their salary or whatever the things they have to get the approval from the ministry of finance they have to get the approval from the treasury for any department in the government organization and uh, to satisfy itself that revenues and other monies due to the government including those to commercial activities and deposit properly collected and brought to account by the government department so so government agents like uh, indian revenue department and other department will collect uh, revenues money from the public or any other ways using commercial activities or business activities or whatsoever right uh, so that money is that income should be deposited should be timely deposited to the uh, department account the ministry treasury timely deposit all the money to the treasury and to satisfy itself that financial regulations are complied with uh, by government department and uh, the treasury will ensure that uh, ensure that all the departments government organization should uh, should follow the financial regulations right they are not de they should not deviate the financial regulations in this way they are controlled of financial transaction in the organization and also to exercise supervision of the consolidated fund i already explained what is consolidated fund so all the funds will come to a one place that fund is called consolidated fund the government and the government fund account as well as our money is held in deposit all the revenues all the money belongs to the government should deposit in the consolidated fund and uh, general responsibility of chief accounting officer and accounting officer uh, 